Colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it's a, a privilege to be standing here to share something with you, sort of the closing, closing talk for the day. Um, a few months ago, I was sitting around a campfire and I was um, discussing quite uh, heavily with some friends the state of the macro situation in our country. We were debating all the usual challenges, uh, which seems unusually challenging at the moment. Um, we were talking about the slow growth in the economy, unemployment, high, um, high levels of inequality. And we were feeling quite gloomy. Um, and we thought, well, how do we shift this conversation? So we started talking a little bit about you know, how we can make a difference. And, um, and I was quite taken aback when uh, someone turned to me very quickly and said, Peter, Mergon has spent all this money in the country. What difference has it made? And I thought, wow, how do I answer that? I thought, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I wanted to tell him about the fact that over the last 10 years, the so-called lost decade in our country, we've invested over a billion rand in startup businesses, creating thousands of jobs. We, from the proceeds of the work that we do, we fund uh, ministries all across our country that impacts the lives of over a million people. And then what about the impact of the Nation Builder Partners? the extension of our friendship network that impact lives as well all across our country. The ripples just go out. How can you even ask that? But I wasn't sure that I was going to convince him. So I instead gave him a different answer. I said to him, you know what? Come with me to one of the ministries that we support. Come and meet the people on the ground. Come and meet, see the work they do. And come and meet someone whose life has been impacted by the work that they do. And then you decide for yourself whether it's made a difference. The conversation moved on, but I reflected on this question for some time, on the sense of almost hopelessness that it revealed. And I was reminded of something someone once said, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And it got me wondering, maybe it's time we need to change the way we look at our country so that the things we notice about our country change. I would further suggest that to unlock that change, we need to shift our gaze from only seeing the macro, numbers and statistics, and to instead zoom in, almost like when we use Google Earth. At the big picture, we see just a big blob, which is Earth. But when we zoom in, we start seeing definition, contrasts, beauty. And I think, uh, that when we think only in the macro, we so easily become disheartened and convince ourselves that our generosity, the little bit that each of us are able to bring, doesn't really make a big difference in the bigger scheme of things. And so we end up standing on the sidelines, criticizing, doubting whether anything we do will really make a difference, whether we can make a difference. However, when we zoom in to the level of an individual, a real person, and we start to engage, we discover that our generosity can truly make a massive difference. And as we do so, a connection is made. Our mutual understanding grows deeper and our hearts open wider, leading us to even greater change. Against this backdrop, I want to share just something of our journey at Mergon um, and how we've been learning about zooming in, about building bridges as we journey with many nonprofit organizations. As I, as I share, I trust that it will stir something in your own hearts around how you may be uniquely positioned to build bridges of generosity, whether through your interaction with nonprofit organizations, in your businesses, or simply as an individual. When Mergon started off, um, we initially had no internal capacity and very little experience in the field. We were quite oblivious to probably many blind spots we had. Uh, expectations we created, the perceptions that we left with people through the things we said and maybe often the things we didn't say. However, in time we learned that journeying with others, when journeying with others as a giver or a funder, um, uh, it's as important how we give as it is what we give. 
we learned that there's something called a power gap. That gap between the funder and the, the giver of the, of the money and the recipient or the beneficiary of, of, the, of the giving. And, and that that power gap is real and that it causes walls to rise up between these two parties or these two sides. It puts them on different sides. And it means that we sacrifice true understanding and we often end up imposing what we think is the right thing on people without understanding the fullness of context and reality. And so we started exploring how we could break down these walls. How could we position ourselves as true partners? Not as someone giving a hand out or a hand up, but someone taking hands, an organization who takes hands with others and walking together on a journey um, where we both bring something of value to facilitate real change. We began by asking more questions rather than coming with all the answers. Instead, discovering the answers together. We discovered the importance of extending dignity and respect through relationship. Viewing our partners not only as a source of statistics and pictures on an impact report, but as real people who live and work in deeply challenging circumstances which we often don't fully comprehend. And we invited our partners to bring all of who they are to the partnership. Their successes, their failures, and their vulnerabilities. Now that's a big ask for a beneficiary to come and share with a funder where they really are and to trust us to be trustworthy with that reality that they share with us. But as they've done so and started taking us into their confidence, we could truly relate to their challenges. We could start thinking creatively about how do we more effectively walk with them on this journey. Let me share a short testimony with you. Uh, in response to a need we picked up at a number of our partners, we decided to create a conference or a breakaway, a retreat that we called Breathe. And the purpose was exactly that. It's to create opportunity for leadership couples who lead ministry and nonprofits to breathe, to come and be rest, come rest, be restored, and to create a space where they, they could be open and honest about where they are, the challenges they face. It has been an incredible time spent with all these various ministries. And it's a rare opportunity for people who are often deeply financially constrained who have to always keep up a brave face and always keep the momentum going for the sake of keeping the, uh, the impact that they are um, involving themselves with going. And so after one of these brief events, an attendee sent us we received many letters of that, but one letter that I just want to share with you an extract. I'm not using real names here, but the person wrote, Dear Etienne, I can't begin to explain to you the change in not just my life, but in Anne's as well. The significance of those few days has impacted us and shifted something forever. Since 2010, Anne and I have gone through some tough times with our health. I put my head down and distracted myself by working hard but really just closed myself up and built a wall in order to survive. After Breathe, I went on a journey of feeling things again, which centered around vulnerability and generosity. So thank you for recognizing the need to support leaders and for creating a safe space for us to be honest with ourselves, to reflect and to breathe. How do we even start to measure the impact or the difference this has made and the ripple effect that this small thing, this one weekend away, that, that it has had on and could have on the life of a leader who impacts a whole community on a daily basis. For me, this, uh, this speaks about the power of partnership, of a relational partnership, of journeying together. We have an incredibly generous nation. I think South Africans are incredibly generous. There's many stats that come out every year around that. And I'm pretty sure every person in this room is giving somewhere, is being generous somewhere. However, we are unfortunately sometimes prone to sort of, how can I say, tipping those in need and preferring to give from a distance, from behind the safety of the walls we've built. Yet how much more impactful could that giving be if it is done in the context of relationship? if it not only fills a financial gap,
but also builds trust and respect and restores dignity. I sincerely believe each of us have the opportunity, wherever we are and whoever we are, to take a small step forward to break down the walls that divide us, to build a bridge through our generosity. Just imagine the potential it could unlock. The second thing we've learned is that generosity that builds bridges goes beyond finances. It requires us to bring all our talents, our resources, and our resourcefulness to the relationship. Initially, our giving was only financial report, uh, support, but as we've grown, we've learned that we've got so much more to give. We have assets through relationships, through connections, knowledge, experience, that broad diversity of the things that we see. All these things have, are valuable assets that we can bring as a contribution to enhance the work of our partners. These are different types of capital, which often doesn't have a big financial cost, but can add disproportionate value to the lives of leaders and the organizations they lead. I want to just give you a very simple example. Um, Nation Builder, a while ago, decided to host some conversation sessions called a Brains Trust. They would invite a ministry or nonprofit leader to bring a problem that they are wrestling with, and they would invite some business leaders to come into the room with them and to have a conversation. We, all we did was we provided the space for the conversation and we extended the invitations. The conversations that came out of that were so rich, the ministry and, and, and non-profit leaders uh, walked away with some ideas, some perspectives, some fresh thoughts around the problems they were facing. And the business leaders had completely new lenses on around realizing how challenging some of the things are that these people working uh, in the field and trying to make a difference are, are facing. And probably for me the most valuable thing was that many of these business leaders said, you know what, I don't have the answer for you, but I am sure I know this guy and I'm sure he's going to know the answer. And that's how it happens. That's how we, by just create, uh, uh, coming with a different attitude of saying, let's just not, not just bring financial resources, but let's Invite some friends along around the table and start engaging. Um, we are giving something that's probably more valuable than financial resources, our time. Um, but it has similarly has a disproportionate impact when you try and measure the impact that it could have uh, on, the, on the work of those foundations, uh, the ministries and nonprofits. For me, this epitomizes why Nation Builder was created build a space where people with different skill sets, experiences, and networks can work together for a greater impact. It has truly been a source of inspiration to us to experience the generosity of the business leaders and CSI practitioners that's walked with us on the Nation Builder journey, to be prepared to selflessly give of their most valuable resource, their time, for the greater good. We are sorely mistaken if we think that our ability to be generous is limited to our financial capacity. When we choose to walk with others, we soon realize that none of us have all the resources or solutions to change lives, communities, or our country. But as we join forces and each generously contribute all we have in our hand, we might well be amazed at the change we can bring. Thirdly, a generosity that builds bridges requires not only walking alongside and bringing what we have in our hand, but it also requires that we bring ourselves. As we walk this journey with our partners, whether in the foundation or through our investment team or through Nation Builder, we dare to invest ourselves in relationships. We pray for our partners, we encourage them, we rejoice in their successes, and we, we share in their disappointments. We dare to get involved. We champion their cause. Of course, it can be deeply uncomfortable to get personally involved, to have to deal with the messiness of broken lives and unfulfilled expectations and the overwhelming reality that people are often faced with. I recently took a, a small step and decided, uh, I heard about a conversation that was happening in Kaimandi, and I thought, you know what, I want to be there. I want to be in the room and listen to what is being said. People from Stellenbosch community were invited and from the Kaimandi community, and met at the Legacy Center in Kaimandi, which is one of the partners that we work with. 
over a meal. Um, and, uh, and so it was so interesting for me to hear the conversations, how we had many similar aspirations. We shared so many similar fears. But where the difference came in was in the frustrations we experienced. And it was interesting to listen to the frustration that um, the guys were sharing around the, their work with the municipality in Stellenbosch. And, and one of the ladies stood up and she said, you know what? When will the people with power and influence start caring enough to fight on behalf of those who don't have power and influence? And that really struck me. I thought, okay, that is the type of generosity that is needed to change this country. It requires not resources, not finances, but it requires someone to open their heart, to stand alongside someone else and take up their plight. It made, led me to realize as I left there that it's only when we're brave enough to venture into uncomfortable spaces to give ourselves, to give of ourselves that we are shifted from apathy to empathy, from self-preservation to caring generosity, from hopelessness, hopelessness to contagious hopefulness. It's then that we are changed as we seek to bring about change. But what of the risks? So we do these things and there are risks. Of course there are risks. There's always risk involved. Whenever you walk onto a new bridge, there's risk. You put one step in front of the next. You sort of test the wall, test the bridge a little bit. You don't just rush over and, uh, you know, uh, without, without being careful. You know, we need to be wise. We need to be courageous. But it also requires faith. And as we've built these bridges of partnership, we've learned... We've needed to learn how to manage sometimes seemingly conflicting tensions. For example, developing a relational partnership but still expecting accountability. Bringing all our resources that we can bring but not taking over and uh, getting operationally involved. And getting fully involved in terms of our commitment but still maintaining a healthy independence as a custodianship to our stakeholders. All of these are possible when we've built bridges of mutual trust, respect, and transparency. You know, we so carefully weigh the risk of getting involved. Um, but what of the risk of not getting involved? Of a clinical, faceless generosity without real re relationship, where we don't grow in our understanding of one another, or find any mutual ground. Is there not a greater risk in a, such a disconnected generosity? At Mergon, we are deeply inspired by the life of Jesus Christ. Jesus was never afraid to risk in relationship. Wherever he went, he was always deeply connected to people, mostly the outcasts, the disempowered, the lower tiers of society. There's a powerful passage of scripture in the book of Matthew where a crowd, a big crowd of over 5,000 people followed Jesus around for three days. And at a certain point in the story, Jesus looks up and he realizes these people haven't eaten, they are hungry. And then he says these, he calls his disciples and he says these critical and beautiful words. He says, I have compassion for these people. In these mo in, it is in this moment of deep compassion with the reality of the needs of the people that led Jesus to do one of his greatest miracles. Despite a huge lack of resources, Jesus understood the risk, yet he still chose to step out. Above all, Jesus understood better than anyone what it meant to truly give of yourself and give yourself for someone else. I want to conclude. Our Mergon journey has brought us to a realization that our ability to connect and equip others and to build relationship is a key part of our ma mandate and our ability to truly be catalysts for extraordinary impact. We will not give up on hope. The nation, this nation is known for our resilience and therefore so many beautiful and amazing initiatives, world-class programs have come out of this nation as we all creatively try and figure out how do we turn things around. Our privilege and our call is to become co-creators of this destiny. Therefore, the challenge to us is to be generous not just with our finances, but to be generous with all that we have and all that we are. To step out from behind our walls, 
to become a compassionate partner in our quest to unlock hope in South Africa. After a day such as this, such a rich day, we can listen to these amazing stories and testimonies of what people are doing and be inspired and maybe walk away with some tools to action. But unless we actually believe that we can have an impact, that we can make a difference and hold hope for the future of South Africa, we will never take the steps necessary to be part of it. This doesn't mean we have unrealistic optimism or that we ignore the macro facts. It does, however, mean that we, and it is, however, a call for us to have substantiated hope. But it's only in the getting involved that we will actually see the reasons, see the actual impact and the reasons for the hope. When you create a work of art, um, and I need to say Michael Moore and I created art, this was much better a while ago, but we both ended up covered with paint. You've got paint pretty much all over yourself when, you, when you're creating a work of art. It's messy. No painter, but the reality is no painter can paint a, paint a masterpiece by standing on the sideline and giving instructions. And therein lies the art in the connection, the message, the impact. It's in the coming close that you discover the art of business, the art of generosity, and maybe that could even unlock the art of meaningful living for us in the process. Thank you.